Okay, okay, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, UG Pines Lifestyle Session, Lifestyle Virtual Session. Welcome, everyone. Um, we're still having people um, joining to this group. So this morning, we are going to be discussing learning and um, sharing some information based on the spirit of prophecy, based on the Bible, and also based on science, on how we can uh, receive the benefits of this very uh, simple, I can say, simple and very effective therapy in order to probably reverse diabetes, reverse body liver, reverse um, overweight or obesity, even modulate, control, and in some situations reverse autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, right, like lupus and some others. Um, it's a very interesting how our body it's able to regenerate when we are given the best or the, raw, the right raw materials that our bodies need. Water, right? Nutrition or a good nutrition, right? Um, sunshine. It's very interesting. And I have been experienced this situation in my life and it has been a blessing to be able to learn these principles and also share it with you. So let's pray. Let's pray, uh, everybody, in order to have a direction for this meeting. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are so thankful with you, Lord, because you are giving us the opportunity to be here again, Lord, in front of your presence, first of all. And also, we are so thankful that you can continue giving us life, Lord. At this moment, I ask you for your presence, that you can be with each of one in this digital virtual room, Lord. And also, Lord, we are so thankful with you for the ways that you have been providing us in order to continue with this program. I ask you, Lord, that you can bless every member of this room. You can bless every family that they are going to be um, learning even more of how to take care of this body that you are giving us, Lord. Please, Lord, be with us, not just during this meeting, but also in every activity that we are going to be doing, not during this program, but also in our daily activities, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, okay, everybody. So, we have um, we have here, we have here, um, well, you know already, right? Uh, who we are, we are UG Pines Institute, who is a institute that it's that has the mission to share the natural remedies, share uh, lifestyle medicine, and also it has the mission to <clears throat> it has the mission of uh, share the gospel, right? through the medicine, through the lifestyle medicine. Um, we are located right in Alabama, UG Pines Lifestyle Center. We have two missionary programs, or we have uh, two missionary schools. One of them is called the LE program, or Lifestyle Educator Program, with a, a duration of six months. And we have also the Lifestyle Counselor Program with a duration of one year. I really recommend to you uh, apply and also you can come as a student in order to learn not just about natural remedies 
but learn also about gardening, to learn about hydrotherapy, to learn about um, many other uh, tools that we can be using in the um, mission field. In the city, in Columbus, Georgia, we have our restaurant, a country life health food store. It's a vegetarian restaurant where you will, have, you will find many, many, many delicious vegan dishes and also you will find many other many uh, products many vegan products uh, we have uh, you can find us in youtube uchi pines uchi pines institute in youtube and also you can go into our website uchipines.org and this specific in health you in this but in this link you will have many of the handouts that we are using here at the Lifestyle Center in order to treat this. Okay. Um, so here in this area you will have you will have um, many resources in order uh, or how to treat the diseases in a natural way in this part okay you will have a diabetes hypertension uh, cholesterol problems um, how to exercise uh, how to cook this kind of bread well you will have a many 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 protocols and information okay so let's talk about fasting um i just want to remind you this diagram that i shared with you uh, on sunday morning when we were talking about obesity and you can see here the causes of death in the united states in the 1900s it was related to 53 percent they were related to um infectious diseases only 12 percent they were related to cardiovascular diseases and only six percent they were related to cancer but what happened in 2010 after 100 years it has been a dramatic shift in the causes of death in the united states taking consideration 33 percent they are related now to cardiovascular diseases 32 percent they are related to cancer four percent they are related to diabetes however we need to take this into consideration one of the principal complications of diabetes is just cardiovascular diseases one of the principal complications of diabetes is cancer one of the principal complications of 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 um, diabetes is alzheimer's alzheimer's disease this afternoon people we are going to be talking about how to reverse diabetes okay how to reverse the diabetes okay so keep in mind of this um so even that diabetes per se it's going to have like uh four percent of the causes of death here in the u.s um diabetes it is going to it is going to it is going to promote the complications of all these conditions okay so let's see here the map of obesity here in u.s you will have some states like uh, texas oklahoma arkansas mississippi alabama tennessee kentucky south carolina with the highest rate of what with the highest rate of obesity okay with the highest rate of obesity and you can see here the rates of cancer death in the united states you will see that they are the same the same states oklahoma Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, right? The same states, the same, the same states with the highest rate of obesity. They are almost the same states with the highest rate on um, cancer death. However, if you check also the chart or the map of the states with the highest rate on hypertension, you will see that the highest that the states, the same states with the highest rate of obesity, they are going to be the highest rate states with a highest rate with a hypertension. 
with diabetes and with some other complications. So one of the simple ways in order to maintain a weight is just practicing this therapy, right? So there is one, uh, one of the quotations that it really um, um, impressed me when I read it. It was something that Energy White wrote, uh, I don't know, in 19, 1902. It says, there are some who will be benefited more by abstinence from food for a day or two every week than by any amount of treatment or medical advice. To fast one day a week would be of incalculable benefit to them. So you can see now that we are in the 2020s. We are in the 2020s and um, uh, just an announcement. Um, uh, you can record the presentation. Yeah. Um, there, um, you we are living in the 2020, uh, actually, I mean, at this moment, right? And probably three years ago, everybody was talking about fasting. Three years ago, it was the boom in the scientific, in the scientist, in the science, in the medical field. It was a boom, right? However, Energy White, more than 100 years ago, she was already advising the use of fasting. And the most interesting that he was advising not just fasting, but she was advising intermittent fasting. And we are going to check about it, right? Well, the history of fasting, we know that one of the uh, one Hippocrates or Hippocrates who was the father of the medicine um, Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about uh, to record the presentation. I think that we are not allowed to do it. However, um, I can tell you that we are recording the presentations and this presentation is going to be uh, uploaded later. And in that situation, I believe that you will have the option to, to download it, okay? So after we finish, you can go again to the the website and what they we're going to upload it probably in the afternoon so in that situation you will be able to record the presentation sorry about it uh, michelle that we are not able or you are not going to be able to record it now okay sorry about it well um we have many philosophers for example socrates plato aristotle that they used to advise to their disciples that use of fasting or they used to do this they used to have this um, therapy or they used to have this habit of being on fasting, right? Like a lifestyle, like a day, not like a daily activity probably, but probably like a weekly activity, right? And Hippocrates, he mentioned something very interesting. He said, our medicine should be our food, but to eat when you are sick is to feed your sickness. Instead of using medicine, Rather, fast one day. And we have the best example in the Bible. We have the best example ever. Jesus. How many days was fasting? Jesus was fasting almost, for, well, he was fasting 40 days. It's interesting that he was fasting right before he was starting his ministry in order to have spiritual strength and in order to have emotional strength and in order to have spiritual and physical strength, right? So we know that fasting, brothers and sisters, my friends, fasting, it can enhance your cognitive behavior. It can enhance your emotional behavior. It can enhance your physical strength. And also the most important, it can, for the principal benefit, it can enhance and strengthen your spiritual life. So, one of the first physicians here in U.S. that he was using the, um, or advising the use of fasting, it was Isaac Jennings. Isaac Jennings, it, uh, it, uh, it was a well-known physician at that time in the 1800s. And he was the first physician here in U.S. 
that he was advising the use of fasting, but not just this. He was advising that discarded the, the use of drugs. He never, or he was advising that discarded the use of drugs. Also, he was promoting fasting, vegetarian diet, pure water, sunshine, clean air, exercise, emotional balance, and rest. And what happened? We know that in the 1866, by the leading vision of Ellen G. White and also John Harvey Kellogg, we have as a Seventh-day Adventist church, the first sanatorium that it was a Barry Creek sanatorium. And something interesting that, that everybody knows now specific during this time of COVID-19, that during the flu epidemic in the 1918, around the world, I mean, at least 20 million people around the world, they were dying about this consequence. The interesting thing that almost, almost 100% of patients that they came to the lifestyle center, that they came to the Barrow Creek Sanatorium, they were able to be healed with using hydrotherapy, using enemas, using fasting, and also using vegan food, doing exercising, a fresh air, a sun bathing. It's interesting when we compare the military hospitals of the time, and when we compare the, um, the um, um, when we are comparing the statistics from the sanatoriums, the sanatoriums they had a better outcome in order to how to treat this condition specific in order to prevent pneumonia, in order to prevent pneumonia. So. Here is the quote again. There are some who will be benefited more by abstaining from food for a day or two every week than by any amount of treatment or medical advice. To fast one day a week will be of incalculable benefit to them. So, friends, what's happened or what's happening when you are eating? Well, we have here this diagram. When you are eating, we have the carbohydrates, right? You are in taking fats and also you are taking proteins, right? So, uh, carbohydrates. The carbohydrates, they are going to break down in what? They are going to break down in sugar or glucose, right? And you will be using this glucose in order to store it as a glycogen, okay? Some others of the glucose that your body or your insulin is not storage as a glycogen, you are going to be storage into like uh, in the form of fat, okay? And this is the point or this is one of the foundations of the diabetes, okay? We're going to be discussing of this this afternoon. Um, so once you uh, have been reached the limit of storage glycogen, your insulin is going to convert the carbohydrates into fat okay and where is going to be sending this fat well this fat is going to be sending into muscle cells this fat is going to be sending into your liver and also this uh fat probably is going to be strange in many locations where you shouldn't be having fat storage in this is one of the problems because if you are eating very high levels of refined carbohydrates they are going to be converted in, you are going to increase the levels of the insulin, right? The insulin is going to be converting that glucose into fat, storage it in your liver, storage in your muscle cells as well. And this, and in this situation, you are going to start one condition that it's called insulin resistance insulin resistance and insulin resistance is the first step in order to develop pre-diabetes diabetes and also fatty liver okay so this is very important carbohydrates and how they are related with the insulin uh, friends insulin is a hormone that yes i mean is going to modulate the blood sugar however when you have a when you have a very high levels of insulin you will have high levels of production of fat and we spoke about this 
um, on Sunday, right? High levels of refined carbohydrates, high levels of blood sugar, high levels of fat storage, okay? It's like a chain, it's like a cycle. And in this cycle, you are promoting the production of fat. And in this situation, you are promoting the insulin resistance, which is the first step to develop diabetes, okay? And many other conditions, okay? Uh, friends, uh, we need fats, but the problem is what kind of fats are you eating? For example, if you are eating only saturated fats from animal products, you are going to be building up every cell in your body. Every cell in your body, it's related or it's built up with fat. However, if you are taking, you are taking, you are eating only saturated fat from saturated fats from animals, you are going to be building up your cells with saturated fats, animal fats. So we don't want this because this is one of the first um, uh, situations where you are going to be promoting inflammation in the membranes, I mean in the uh, layer, in the, in the layer of your cell and also inside your cell, you are going to be promoting inflammation. And this inflammation, long-term inflammation, is going to impair the signaling, the signaling of this, of one transporter in order to introduce the glucose inside your cell related to high levels of inflammation, related to high levels of saturated fat, related to high levels of animal protein or animal fat, right? So it is true, we need, pro we need fats. Why we need fat? Well, because every cell in your body needs fat. We need fat in order to have a good brain function. We need fat in order to absorb some, um, some vitamins, for example, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. If we don't have a good amount of fat, we cannot absorb these vitamins, specific vitamin D. If we don't have a good amount of fat, we cannot um, uh, produce estrogens, neither testosterone. If we don't have good amounts of fat, we are not going to be able to uh, function our nerves. They are not going to be function very well. The layer of every membrane of your nerve cells is related with fat. It's it's built, it has been built up by fat, okay? But it's very important because, it's very important because your cholesterol, your liver, is going to be producing 1,000 milligrams of cholesterol every day. So friends, you don't need more cholesterol from your meals. You don't need more cholesterol from your food, okay? Why? Because your liver is or it's able to produce 1,000 milligrams of cholesterol in order to maintain your brain function in order, in order to maintain your production of estrogen and testosterone in order, in order to produce bilirubin, in order to produce bile salts, in order to break down more fat to be absorbed. I mean, we don't need more cholesterol. The problem is when you are overloading the cholesterol intake, it's when you are going to be storing that cholesterol probably in your liver, that cholesterol probably around your heart, that cholesterol probably inside your arteries of your heart, right? Promoting um, coronary artery disease, right? So it's very important because you don't need cholesterol from external um, source. Why? Because your body is able to produce cholesterol. What kind of fats do we need? Well, we need olives, we need uh, avocados, we have uh, pumpkin seeds, we have nuts, we have almonds, we have uh, many other sorts of vegetables or vegan or veggie kind of fats, okay? So all these fats, they are going to be break down into fatty acids, and those fatty acids, they are going to be stored as uh, triglycerides and some others they are going to be using in order to promote many biochemical processes in our body, okay? What about proteins? Well, 
We need proteins in order to have what? Our amino acids, okay? We need proteins in order to have our amino acids. And um, amino acids, they are just um, some compounds that we need in order to have uh, in order every uh, biochemical process in our bodies, okay? It's going to help us for every meta metabolic pathway, okay, in our bodies. Also, the proteins, when we are eating a lot or high amounts of proteins, they are going to be a storage as a glycogen in our muscles and in our liver and also in our fat. I mean, as a form of fat, carbohydrates and proteins in this situation, they are going to be behaving similar, okay? When you have a high amount of proteins, you are going to be uh, storage this protein as a glycogen, you are going to be storage this protein as a fat, or you are going to be using this protein in order to maintain in order every metabolic pathway, okay? So it's very important to understand this because now that we understood, now that we know already what's happening when we are eating, well, what's happening when we are not eating, right? What's happening when we are not eating? We have here two hormones. One of them is the insulin and the other one is the glucagon, okay? The insulin, the insulin, as I mentioned before, the insulin is the hormone that's going to maintain what? The blood glucose in order. But also it's going to promote something that's called lipogenesis. Lipogenesis is a hormone that it's called, well, it's not a hormone, sorry. Lipogenesis is the process which means it's the production of fat in your body, right? Lipo means fat, genesis means production or beginning, right? So lipogenesis, that's why this is very important because um, patients or individuals that they are taking insulin or injected insulin in order to treat the, to treat the diabetes, they never going to be able to lose weight. And even when they start to use insulin, they start to gain weight, and gain weight, and gain weight. And this is not a good treatment for, because you are not treating the problem. You are worsening even the problem, right? Why? Because the insulin is just the hormone or the, the lipogenic hormone, the hormone that's going to produce fat. However, when this insulin is, pro, it, it has produced fat already, it's going to send all this fat in your adipose tissue, okay, yeah, but also into your muscle cells, into your muscles, and also into your liver. And in the liver, is going to be producing something that is called fatty liver, and in your muscle, is going to be producing something that is called intramyocellular lipotoxicity. It's just high levels of fat inside your muscles, producing or promoting a inflammation or promoting a toxicity in your muscles. And remember, this is the first step in order to develop diabetes and pre-diabetes. Why? Because you have a very high levels of fat in your muscle cells, you have a very high levels of fat in your liver or around your liver, impairing the signaling of the insulin in order to introduce more glucose into your muscle cells and in order to stop the production of glucose, okay? Glucose. Okay, remember that the insulin is going to storage carbohydrates and proteins into glycogen. It's an energy. Glycogen is a source of energy, okay? Just remember glycogen, a source of energy. And also, I mean, um, storage in the muscle cells and also in your liver. And this is a energy storage coming from carbohydrates, okay? Glycogen, okay? But what happens? What happens when we are not eating, or not, not per se when we are not eating, but we have another hormone, and the hormone is called glucagon, okay? This hormone, it's going to do the opposite, the opposite of the, the opposite of the insulin. If the insulin is going to promote the fat storage, the glucagon is going to promote the fat breakdown. If the insulin is going to promote the production of fat or storage of fat in your liver and in your muscle, well, 
the glucagon is going to do the opposite. It's going to enhance, it's going to stimulate the breakdowns of fat from your liver and from your muscle cells. If the insulin is going to promote the glycogen storage, which is a form of energy in your liver and in your muscle, well, your glucagon is going to do the opposite. The glucagon is going to stimulate or trigger the breakdowns of glycogen in order to produce energy, okay? So we have two hormones that they are going to be producing in this, in this organ, in the pancreas, but they are going to be working in the opposite way, okay? So we will have many, many benefits from the glucagon. And one of them is that it's going to enhance the blood flow into your brain and also into your kidneys. So if you enhance the blood flow into your kidneys, you are going to promote what? You are going to promote the, the better filtration or the better function in your kidneys. It says that the glucagon is going to enhance the hepatocyte survival, what is this hepatocyte survival? Well, it's going to enhance the lifespan of your liver. It's going to enhance the lifespan of your uh, liver cells, right? It's going to enhance also the capacity of your heart as well. So it's going to promote lipid oxidation. It's going to promote also the, um, the renewal of the cells of your liver, okay? So we have plenty, we have a many, many benefits from this uh, glucagon hormone. So, but there is something very interesting because these two hormones, even that they are going to be produced in the same, the same, the same organ, but from different cells, they are going to be working in the opposite way. However, for example, if you have a very high levels of insulin because you have been eating during the day, and because you have been eating high amounts of refined carbohydrates, the glucagon is going to be what? It's going to be depressed or it's going to be very, very low. So you won't be having any benefits from this glucagon hormone. However, if you maintain a regularity in your meals, if you are eating not high uh, food intake of refined carbohydrates, the glucagon is going to be in a normal or regular levels and the, sorry, the insulin and the glucagon is going to be what? Coming up, coming up. But we need a homeostasis. We need an equilibrium within these two hormones. And the problem is that most of the time, most of the people, they are living or we have been living in this state when we maintain the insulin levels very high, and when we maintain the gluco glucagon levels very low. And in some situations, we need to have this equilibrium. And in some situations, we need even to have high or higher levels of glucagon, okay? And this is one of the first benefits that you will have when you are going to be fasting. Because when you are going to be fasting, you are not what? You are not eating carbohydrates, ni either protein, ni either fats. So what are the two sources of uh, nutrients that they are going to increase the production of insulin? Well, it's just protein and carbohydrates. So taking this in consideration, if you are not eating, if you are fasting, your insulin is going to be low and your glucagon it needs to be high. So in this situation, uh, you are going to be having all the benefits that we have been discussing about the glucagon. And we need this, we need to reach this point, okay? So, taking this in consideration, in the first 12, 14 hours of uh, your fasting therapy or your fasting uh, activity, um, your liver, sorry, your, um, your pancreas is going to be producing glucagon, okay? So the first 12 hours, you are going to be working or functioning not specific with glucose that you have been eating, but more from glucose that your liver has been producing, remember, because you have glycogen storage, okay? If you have a glycogen storage, 
this energy source you will have or it will be maintain your body functioning for the first 12 hours okay 12 hours of your fasting after these 12 hours of fasting you are going to be producing energy produced in your liver but not anymore from glycogen because something is very interesting with this glycogen that you have only a limit of uh, storage of your glycogen and the average uh, limit of gly glycogen storage in your liver um, is going to maintain your body function during fasting around 10 to 12 hours after 12 hours of fasting you don't have more glycogen okay you don't have more glycogen so in this situation you are going to be needing another source of energy and this source of energy is going to be what it's going to be the fat the fat that you have that you have in your liver the have the fat that you have in your muscle cells in order to produce something that is called the ketones or the ketones bodies right and in this situation when you don't have glycogen anymore and when you are when your body needs specifically the liver needs to produce energy from fat it's going to be producing something that's called the ketones or the the ketones bodies right as you see here in the screen the ketone bodies under hypoglycemia on their very low levels of glucose uh, your liver your hepatocytes they are the liver cells they are going to be converting the um, acetyl coa from fatty acid oxidation i mean from fat in order to produce ketones bodies so now um, one of the examples of ketones of uh, or medium chain triglycerides or medium chain fatty acid is acetoacetate and hydroxybutyrate alpha hydroxybutyrate probably you are able to get those supplements in a capsule form already do i advise to use these supplements no why because you are able to produce these medium chain fatty acids or medium chain triglycerides when you are fasting and after 12 hours of fasting you are going to be producing these medium chain fatty acids acetate and alpha hydroxybutyrate i went to a, a a food store a whole food store i don't remember that the name of this uh, store but it was interesting because I had the chance to see many supplements, many different kind of brands, different kind of um, amounts, and they were selling now acetoacetate and hydroxybutyrate. So, what is the point, right? What's the point to take supplements? It's spending money in order to buy something that your body is able to produce. And this is another point because did you hear about the ketogenic diet right well the ketogenic diet it's a diet when you are going to be eating almost like a 90 percent of your meals of your food intake is going to be coming from just fat okay and many and most of the time is just animal fat we don't need that in order to produce ketones because if you are if you are eating just uh very high amounts of fat well your body is going to be in a ketogenic diet is sorry in a ketogenic state producing ketones all the time however in the short term short term ketogenic diet it can help it can help in order to lose weight i am not advising ketogenic diet i'm telling you it can help however long term long term results or outcome of ketogenic diet they are not really um good good results related with worsening worsening inflammation systemic inflammation worsening insulin resistance worsening even uh, some others uh, autoimmune conditions and many others in, and even i mean worsening the fatty liver uh development right so be careful with this kind of um, 
diets because yes, we, you are going to be producing ketones from this ketogenic diet. And however, there is not, there is not healthy to be eating only one kind of nutrients, okay? By logic, I mean, if we have been reasoning and thinking in the uh, cause and effect, it's not logical that you are going to be living a healthy life eating just one kind of nutrients when God was made us or he created us in order to have these three micronutrients, right? So there is something important here with the ketones, okay, related to cancer, because the cancer cells, they have already a mutation and many of their enzymes inside the, inside the cells of the cancer, I mean the cancer cells, they are not able to use ketones in order to produce energy, right? They need to use right away, they need to use only glucose they cannot use ketones, many of the cancer cells, okay? So there is something interesting also. There is another benefit from, uh, from fasting. Uh, this is called, this is another hormone, it's called the insulin growth factor one. And this insulin growth factor one plays its major physiologic role during adolescence when it promotes growth of several tissues, including bone cartilage, okay? In the adolescent, it's very important to have levels of IGF-1. However, once you are an adult, once you have uh, um, your, uh, your normal um, uh, cells growth, you don't need high levels of IGF-1. If you can see here, who is going to be producing all the high levels of IGF-1? Growth hormone, insulin, and protein-rich diet. It's going to promote that elevation of IGF-1. Interest in that IGF-1, um, high levels, high blood levels of IGF-1 are associated with increased tumor risk and worse cancer prognosis. Why? Because the IGF-1 is going to be the hormone that is going to stimulate the cell growth, any cell growth, including cancer cells, okay? So be careful with it. Insulin, refined carbohydrates, High levels of insulin, remember, um, protein-rich diet, specific animal protein, they are going to promote the elevation of IGF-1. Okay, so the research mentioned that uh, the fasting, it's uh, going to be uh, useful for all these situations, for all these conditions. Cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, epilepsy, obesity, pancreatitis, psoriasis, asthma, cancer, and also uh, depression and psychosomatic disease. What happens in your brain when you are fasting? Okay, energy, energy restriction is going to promote the development or the production of these compounds that they called VDNF. BDNF, okay? These compounds, they are going to travel into your hypothalamus, and in your hypothalamus, they are going to promote the production of new brain cells. In, when I was in the school, when I was in the medical school, um, I, I, learned, I learned that we, to, at certain age, we were not able to produce more brain cells, right? And we had this um, idea, we have this uh, information, right? However, uh, the new or the latest research mentioned that we do, we can produce new brain cells. And one of the simple ways in order to produce brain cells is when we are having energy restriction, when we are having fasting, when we are practicing um, when we are practicing um, intermittent fasting. And why? Because you are going to be producing BDNF. And there is something very interesting because it doesn't matter, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the, how many hours you are going to be fasting. Because when you are producing ketones, 
it's the time when you are going to be, in terms of fasting, it's a time when you are going to be even stimulating more the production of this BDNF. Also, BDNF is going to promote the antioxidant production, it's going to promote also the mitochondrial biogenesis. What is this? It's just the enhancing of the production of energy in all your body, specific also in your brain, right? It's going to promote the uh, synaptic plasticity. The synaptic plasticity is just the interconnection between your brains, between your neurons, right? Between, between your brain cells, right? Um, BDNF, what is this? What is this uh, BDNF? BDNF stands for brain derived neurotropic factors. They are just some compounds that your brain is going to be producing, specific your hypothalamus, in order to promote all these benefits, okay? Brain derived neurotropic factors. You can check it as a BDNF, okay? And BDNF is one of the compounds that it will have many, many benefits in your brain, okay? Um, specific persons with early dementia and specific individuals with Parkinson's disease, specific individuals with any other neurological condition, fasting is going to be one of the best tools in order to treat this condition. Um, there is something interesting to mention that persons with Alzheimer's, they will have almost like a 25% to, I would say 30% of deficits in glucose uptake. They cannot absorb glucose right away. So it seems like uh, they need an alternative use of energy. They need another kind of energy besides glucose because they cannot absorb the glucose, right? However, people, people or person, individuals with around 65 years and above, they have already like a 13 or 15%, 13 to 15% percent deficits deficit in glucose absorption from the brain cells. What I mean is that they need also an alternative source of energy in order to maintain functioning the brain cells. There is something very important that ketones, ketones, remember that we spoke about ketones, ketones bodies, they are a medium chain fatty acid or medium chain triglycerides. And these are the only fatty acids that they can cross the blood-brain barrier, which is the, 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 the membrane, which is the membrane or the barrier that is going to prevent or is going to prevent the, uh, the introduction of many uh, compounds into your brain. This is the uh, blood-brain barrier, right? So this is kind of like the, the separation between your brain and your, uh, and your circulation. So it seems like uh, the only fatty acids or the only uh, alternative source of energy that your brain can use in order to um, in order to in order to uh, promote your neuron uh, your brain cells working the ketones they can use or your brain can use ketones in order to maintain your brain cells in order or function right um what did i say about 60 years old and above i mean uh what happened with this kind of people well with these people with this age um range of um individuals um they will be having already around 13 to 15 percent of deficit in glucose uptake what i mean is that they um cannot they cannot absorb glucose right away they need another kind of energy okay and that happened also with alzheimer's disease persons or individuals right okay so they need they need an alternative source of energy and also um, the ketones, the ketones, they can, they can uh, give them, they can uh, give them um, this kind of uh, energy. 
Why? Well, it probably is related with aging process, probably is related with microvascular damage also. I mean, 65 years and above, microvascular damage, um, aging process, uh, production of free radicals. Of course, if you are having a good lifestyle, I mean, you will have a, a lower risk to develop cognitive impairment. And also, one of the simple ways in order to prevent having this deficit in glucose uptake or glucose absorption is having a good lifestyle, right? So this is it's kind of like a normal, I would say, or abnormal process or aging process, okay? So that's happening in our brain. So what's happening uh, in our stomach? What's happening in our in our um, in your gastrointestinal in gastro in our gastrointestinal tract? There's there is something very important because there is one hormone that's called the motilin. As you can read here, uh, motilin is released during fasting or the interdigestive period. I mean between meals, and this hormone is going to promote this MMC or this peristalsis movement, which is a propulsive movement initiated during fasting that begins in the stomach and moves on digested material from the stomach and small intestine into the colon. Okay, motilin hormone is going to be producing right after you finish your breakfast, right after you finish your lunch, in order to promote this movement, right, in order to promote this movement of peristalsis. However, if you are eating one hour after your breakfast or two hours after your lunch, you are not going to be producing this hormone, okay? And what's going to happen? Well, you are going to interrupt, interrupt the normal movement of your bowels. You are going to interrupt the normal movement of this peristalsis, right? It's called peristalsis. This hormone also, it's well known as the housekeeper of the gut, okay? Why? Because increased peristalsis in the small intestine and clears out the gut in order to prepare for the next meal. This hormone is going to be inhibited, or is going to be inhibited the production by the foods, high levels of insulin, and also when you are eating a uh, very high or very acidic foods, for example, animal products, they are the most acidic food that you will have, that you will find. So there is two situations, how there are three situations how you are going to decrease the production of motilin. One of them is if you are eating between meals, you are not producing motilin hormone because as long as you are eating or as long as you start to eat again, you are going to stop the production of motilin. I have to tell you something. There is not such a thing like a healthy snack. There is not exist a healthy snack. Even a piece of celery, even a, an apple, even um, some nuts. Two hours, one hour, three hours after the meals is going to interrupt the production of motilin or it's going to interrupt the process of digestion and also the, product, the, the, the process of absorption. But there is something else very important here because also this movement prevents the backflow of bacteria from the colon into the ileum, which is the small intestine, and its subsequent overgrowth in the distal ileum, I mean in the, in, in, in the, in the, uh, um, in the colon. This movement prevents, okay, while you have this movement already in process, we have a bath, okay? We have a valve between your colon and between your small intestine, and this valve, it has to be closed most of the time. Most of the time, you have to be closed. When this valve is open, you are going to promote bacteria or the migration of, of bacteria coming from your colon into your small intestine, and you are going to promote something that is called, something that we know already, or we know that it's called a, uh, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or SIBO, right? And this is very important because SIBO is going to promote inflammation in our gut and this inflammation in our gut is going to promote chronic inflammation producing a many 
chemicals of inflammation or cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, and these inflammatory cytokines, they are going to promote that disruption of this membrane between our circulation and in our gut. And when you promote this disruption of this membrane, you are going to promote that translocation. You are going to promote that leak. You are going to promote that permeability of some toxins from your gut into your circulation. Okay? So now we have situations like a leaky gut. So now we have a, a problems like intestinal permeability. Why? Because we were not, or because we were eating between meals. And this valve, it was open most of the time, promoting bacteria from the colon into your intestine because you were not producing this um, peristalsis movement because the motilin, it was uh, not producing, right? So everything starts with, um, um, everything starts with, uh, with uh, because we were eating between meals. The motilin is going to reproduce it in our gas. The protein is, the motilin is going to reproduce it in our, in our gastrointestinal tract, okay? In certain, in certain parts of our intestine and also in certain parts, certain parts of our stomach, okay? It's going to be like a, a local, local, um, local uh, function in our gastrointestinal tract. So this movement, it's very important. Why? Because it's going to prevent the migration of bacteria. That's why 20 years ago, 25 years ago, they were advising like, oh yes, if you want to have a better health, you need to eat five, six, seven times a day, five micromeals, six micromeals. Why? What's happening now? So, well, we are having problems of SIBO. We are having problems of small intestinal bacteria overgrowth because in this situation, we never were, we are never going to be able to produce motilin and disrupting all this process. And this is just only from the gastrointestinal tract. If you are eating during the day, you are going to maintain the blood uh, insulin levels high, 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 high. And you're never going to be able to produce glucagon. Okay, so um, dietary restriction is uh, when you are eating less than 20 to 40% reduction in your calorie intake. It has been uh, uh, very beneficial for, um, for cardiovascular aging, right? Specific, it can um, help also for uh, hypertension and also the, uh, it can reverse the development of the plaque of cholesterol in your arteries, right? We have a many, uh, many uh, research that it's uh, backing up this uh, information about fasting and cardiovascular disease. Why? Because you are going to be using triglycerides, you're going to be using your cholesterol in order to produce energy. So serum triglycerides and serum cholesterol value, they are going to drop. The blood pressure as a physiological response is going to drop, it's going to be low. Um, you are going to increase the good cholesterol and you're going to decrease that total cholesterol, right? So in 2001, 174 patients with uh, hypertension um, after uh, an average of 15 days of supervised water only fasting in the treatment of hypertension they were able to um, they were able to achieve blood pressure uh, levels sufficient to eliminate the need for medication and more than 90 percent of them became normal tensive um, the journal of alternative and complementary medicine in 2002, they were following 30 patients in an average of 14 days with water uh, only fasting. And they were able, at the end of this study, they were able to achieve or, or decrease or reduce the cost of, uh, of their medicines of, of, uh, on, on almost $3,000 per year per subject. Why? Because they didn't need more medications after this uh, fasting therapy. Okay, what about the diabetes? Uh, diabetes, remember that I mentioned this, diabetes, which is a combination within diabetes and obesity. Well, over the last 25 years, type 2 diabetics, please, type 2 diabetics, type 1 diabetics, they are not able to fast. Why? Because they are not producing an insulin anymore. And if you are not producing insulin anymore, you cannot 
and stop the production of fatty acids. And those fatty acids, they can elevate the acidity in your blood and you can promote some uh, very uh, life-threatening situations. So you always be careful. Not you, you should, if you are type 1 diabetic or if you um, know somebody with type 1 diabetes, don't advise to fast, okay? Don't advise fasting for them, okay? So um, perhaps the most famous study on obesity appeared in the postgraduate medical journal of 1973, which reported the experience of a 27 years old man who fasted without complication for 382 days and lost 276 pounds. Yeah, 382 days and lost 276 pounds. Um, if you check this article, it's in the website, you can have access to this article. You will see that in the first month, they, will, they were giving him some, um, um, some uh, supplements like uh, a potassium, like a sodium, uh, um, uh, 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 like a sodium, uh, like uh, some other uh, supplements because they were concerned about uh, about these kind of uh, minerals, right? However, after two months, they realized that this uh, individual was not able to, um, I mean, uh, uh, was not, he was not in need of these uh, minerals because the body was able to modulate the need of these minerals. So what you should recommend for a person that, is a, that has a type 1 diabetic? Well, with a person with type 1 diabetic, the goal is not, the goal is not to discontinue their insulin, okay? These persons with a type 1 diabetic, they need to continue with the insulin, okay? But the goal with a person with type 1 diabetes is just to modulate or decrease the amount of insulin. Remember, insulin is not, um, is not, uh, we need insulin, but we don't need a very high levels of insulin, okay? Person with type 1 diabetes, they need insulin. How we can manage the, the, the type 1 diabetes? Um, um, of course, plant-based diet. Exercise is very important because the problem of the type 1 diabetes is not just specific the insulin, but even if the person is uh, using or applying very low amounts of insulin, if they are, but if they are uh, exercising along with the insulin, they can enhance the use of insulin very, 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 uh, very, um, um, very successful. We have been seeing this situation here at the Lifestyle Center where um, type 1 diabetics uh, when they are exercising, they can decrease the amount of insulin, okay? That's the goal. The goal is not, is not discontinue the insulin, but the goal is decrease the amount of insulin. Plant-based diet, um, exercise, very important. And also, well, it's in some individuals, they can continue with only eating two meals a day, okay? Um, uh, immune and, and inflammatory disorders, um, it seems like uh, this therapy also decreases the levels of inflammation markers, okay? Uh, time-restricted eating, time-restricted uh, feeding or time-restricted fasting, okay? Why we should be eating only two meals a day and having like uh, 14 to 16 hours um, every day or intermittent fasting? Well, because the insulin is going to drop. The insulin sensitivity, it means like your muscles, they are going to be able to work better with the low amount of insulin because the insulin production or the, ins uh, sorry, because the pancreas uh, function is going to enhance because the blood pressure is going to drop and also the oxidative stress is going to drop. Why we shouldn't be eating in the night? Well, because in the night you are producing melatonin and it seems like the melatonin is going to suppress the production of insulin from your pancreas. So that's why we shouldn't be eating nothing in the night because if we don't have a good levels of insulin in the night, so in the morning, because physiological, like a physiological process, 
you are producing some insulin, some sorry, some glucose during the night, plus the glucose that you were eating for dinner, plus the low amounts of insulin because the melatonin is suppressing the production of insulin. You are not going to be able to modulate the blood sugar, and the blood sugar in the morning is going to be high. Long term, high levels of blood sugar is going to promote the, the diabetes. And forget about the diabetes, it's going to promote that disruption of your kidneys, it's going to promote that disruption of your the well functioning of your eyes, it's going to promote the well functioning of your liver. Well, this afternoon we are going to be talking a little bit more about it. So, but take this into consideration, okay? Early eating, okay? Early eating, having at least 12 to 14, 12, I mean 14 to 16 hours of fasting every day, and you will have all these benefits. Remember that. We have been advising two meal plan a day, according to Spirit of Prophecy. Well, 2020, 2019, the scientific community is just amazed how this two meal plan a day, it's, it works for many conditions when Energy White was instructed to advise or given us these instructions many, many uh, years ago. Um, um, okay, one of the simple things in order to decrease the hunger sensation in the night is that you need to create the height. Okay, I can tell you by experience, I am not or I don't really eat uh, my third meal or I don't eat supper from the last probably two or three years and it was very difficult in the beginning. However, when I understood how my circadian rhythm, how my internal clock is working, or how my internal clock works, I was able to train my stomach, I was able to decrease the levels of ghrelin hormone. Remember in the night when I was able to train my, my stomach in order to uh, not uh, have the need of food in the night. It's gonna take time. If you want, if you are gonna try this, it's gonna take time. You are gonna feel frustrated, but don't give up. You will get it. Okay. So suppressing cancer growth during fasting. Well, because you are going to be reducing the blood glucose, because you are going to be decreasing the um, insulin levels, um, because you are going to be reducing the IGF-1 levels, because you are going to be producing ketones. Okay. And because you are going to promote something that's called autophagy, okay, autophagy, which is just that clears out of toxins inside of your cells or some cells that they have to be uh, renewed. Uh, this is a process called autophagy. And also autophagy is going to be enhanced only in the situations or only in the period of fasting, okay? Um, all these conditions or all these criteria, they are going to force to cancer cells to rely more in metabolites and factors that are limited in the blood, thus resulting in cells death. If you are promoting all these situations, you are forcing the cancer cells in order to die, in order to starve. Why? Because you are not going to have a good levels of glucose or low levels of glucose because the insulin is going to be low, because the IGF-1 is going to be low, because you are going to increase the ketones production, and also because you are going to promote this autophagia process. Remember that 10% of all the cancers are related with high levels of insulin. Um, general principles for, uh, for fasting. Low salt, vegan, high fiber, low fat, low protein, and low sugar diet before and after fasting. Get some rest during fasting. Don't get stressful, okay? Don't get stressed. During fasting is a stress process, so don't get even more stressful, okay? So uh, exercise while fasting is discouraged. Short walks or light stretching, it's okay, it's permissible. Sunlight and pure water is very, very, very important. Um, my friends, uh, fasting is not the magic bullet. Fasting is not the panacea. Okay, fasting is not the uh, is not the main component of the of the um, of the uh, lifestyle uh, change. Fasting is just a component of the uh, is just a component of the 
these natural remedies. Fasting is coming along with nutrition, with exercise, with water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God, okay? In the Bible, friends, in the Bible, um, we have the true fasting in Isaiah 58. And Isaiah 58, or Jesus is telling us, uh, he was telling to the people of Israel, what is the true fasting? And the true fasting is this, it's, he said, and is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every joke? It is not to share the bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own place. Fasting is talking about love God and love to your neighbor. And in conditional love, we have been learning this during the night, right? In the, in the minutes of the night. Then it says, your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth spiritually. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your reward. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away what? The yoke of your mist. The pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall down in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones, and you shall be like a water garden, and like spring of water who waters do not fail. Strength your bonds and strength your immune system. Brothers and sisters, when we are applying not just the physical fast from food, when we are applying the spiritual fasting, and when we are applying the emotional fasting, the Lord is telling us as a promise, we are going to be what? Like spring of water who waters do not fail. I advise you and I recommend it to you that you can um, apply these situations. Some contraindications for fasting. People with type 1 diabetes, they shouldn't be on fasting. People with high levels of uric acid, they should not be on fasting, okay? With gout or high levels of uric acid. Pregnancy or pregnant women, they shouldn't be on fasting. People with underweight, they shouldn't be on fasting. And people with... Um, 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 anemia or severe anemia or any other deficiency on vitamins or minerals, they should not be on fasting, okay? End stage liver disease, they shouldn't be on fasting as, as well. So please um, be careful. Um, if you never fast before, well, you can start with only two meal plan a day and then you can continue um, eating, I mean, you can continue, you can start with this intermittent fasting, you can continue with one day, if you feel fine for one day, well, you can continue with a second day, but don't try to fast, uh, don't try to do like a long-term fasting without any medical supervision. Talk with your physician, talk with your doctor about this, and also uh, be careful with this, okay? So, to try it. Try to do it, try to do it, okay? Uh, however, um, you need to have some uh, uh, precaution. What condition did you name that you would not be advising of, of fasting? Um, well, um, I mentioned like a high levels of uric acid, high levels of uric acid, um, type one diabetes, uh, severe anemia, uh, end stage liver disease, end stage, okay, end stage, okay. Um, in early stage, they can do that. Um, pregnancy, of course, underweight, okay. They are the main uh, situation where you shouldn't be uh, able or you shouldn't be fasting, okay. It's very, uh, it could be a little bit uh, dangerous. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna uh, open uh, uh, 
um, I'm gonna open the microphones with um, okay I heard that by day two you should uh, use protein to help combat the the cleansing crisis feeling is that true um, I shouldn't be advised protein remember protein and carbohydrates they are going to promote what the elevation of insulin and if you are pro if you have uh, some levels uh, uh, of insulin some levels of insulin in your bloodstream and you are going to, uh, to inhibit the lipid oxidation and you are going to inhibit the um, even you are going to inhibit the cleansing um, process why because you are eating uh, nutrients I mean you are in taking nutrients you are start you are going to start the process of um, digestion of all this process but the most important is because you are going to elevate the levels of insulin and, and in this situation you are not going to be uh, functioning by ketones but you are going to be functioning by these uh, proteins uh, that you have been eating okay and this is one of the questions and uh, you can send me the questions uh, to the chat or you can um, okay uh, here is another another question hi what is the best fasting for type 2 diabetes I heard that you mentioned that type 1 uh, is okay okay it's not they don't have to fast okay what's the best fasting for type 2 diabetes we're going to be speaking more about this um, this afternoon but the best fasting for type 2 diabetes is started with two meal plan a day only two meals having a good breakfast having a good lunch and then don't eat nothing until the next day and you will be fasting for 14 to 16 hours every day okay um, and also um, if the person is able to maintain uh, or if he feels okay during this two meal plan a day they can follow one day of fasting okay they can have, follow one day of fasting one or two days a week remember during the fasting people people with diabetes be careful they shouldn't be eating they, they should not be taking um, uh, they shouldn't be taking uh, uh, their medications for diabetes okay they shouldn't be taking the medication for the diabetes. Um, we have another um, uh, uh, another um, another question. Well, yes, uh, we do discourage the the fasting for type one diabetes. We have we have been advising or we have been having people with type one diabetes here at the lifestyle center. Um, however, type one diabetics and they have been fasting, but they are under medical supervision. Okay be careful type 1 diabetes they shouldn't be fasting okay what are the three conditions that inhibit the motivating hormones well high levels of insulin okay refined carbohydrates elevate the levels of insulin uh, acidic foods acidic uh, very acidic foods um, um, animal protein or any kind of uh, uh, well acidic foods right and also i mean the third and the most important eating between meals okay eating between meals is going to suppress the production of uh, uh, motilin. Can you please repeat the contraindication for fasting? Okay, severe anemia, uh, pregnancy, uh, type 1 diabetes, um, um, type 1 diabetes, um, uh, um, high levels of uric acid or gout and end stage liver problems. Okay, um, they have, we have another question. What is the best fasting? for persons with digestive issues example acid reflux and peptic ulcers um, okay uh, friends uh, one of the best treatments for acid reflux of peptic ulcers is just intermittent fasting or at least it's just to uh, it's not eating uh, in the night I mentioned well I didn't uh, I don't think that I mentioned this before um, uh, but in the night you are not producing the same amount of saliva that in the that during the day. That's why in the night the, and, the, in, and in the day the saliva it can help us to modulate the levels of of uh, acid reflux or the levels of acidity. Okay, so in the night if you are eating in the night you are not producing saliva plus you are eating 
you are producing a lot of um, uh, stomach acids, you have those two, you have these two situations, okay? So in the night, if you are eating in the night, you are going to be promoting and you are going to be watering the acid reflux. So if you want to start to have some benefit of this fasting, at least try to um, try to um, to uh, to implement this time restricted feeding or time restricted eating or fasting 16 hours every day, having only two meals a day. Type two diabetes can fast. Yeah, um, they, are, they can fast. However, uh, be careful. I mean, type two diabetes, the diabetics, they can fast. Uh, taking consideration that during the fasting, they shouldn't be uh, taking any of their medications, okay? But just be careful because if they never had fasting before, I mean, they can have some like uh, weakness, fatigue, and some situation of um, hypoglycemia, right? Um, just be careful with your symptoms, okay? What is a typical program for a day of fasting for spiritual health? Um, what should take place before, during, and after fasting also? Is it best not to eat at all or have juice or water or tea? It's better just to have water during the fasting, okay? Juices is not, con I mean, I'm not considered uh, like a, a drinking juice, I'm not considered like a fasting, I consider like a, a low restricted diet or a low calorie restricted diet because you are taking uh, calories. The idea of fasting is just to um, enhance or stimulate that the liver in order to produce um, um, in order to produce ketones, right? And if you are drinking juice, you are not going to be producing ketones. Um, what should take place before, during, and after fasting? Before the fasting, of course, um, try to uh, start to eat only like a fruits, one day of fruits, and the next day you can stop fasting. And after fasting, you can just start or you can break the fast only eating like a raw, raw foods, or you can eat only fruits, or you can eat only salads for in the morning. The idea is don't overload your stomach or your gastrointestinal tract after fasting for one or two days. That's the idea. I wouldn't say that it doesn't matter the food, however, it doesn't matter the amount, okay? Don't overeat or don't overwhelm your stomach after fasting, okay? Um, uh, what's the typical program for a day of fasting for spiritual health? I mean, um, relax, relax. I'm not advised to people to go in for a walk. Just relax, Do, um, uh, uh, try to uh, maintain this connection with uh, uh, our creator and um, also um, try to try to be relaxed during the day of fasting okay I don't recommend to go for a work during fasting in order to have these beneficial spiritual emotional and physical should uh, should you okay some 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 teas well probably you can drink some teas for example chamomile you can drink it uh, milk thistle you can drink but don't use any sweets okay during fasting don't use any sweets should you be fasting if you have a cyborg and candida and most foods are not agreeable with you yeah you can be on fasting if, you're, if you if you have a um, candida or if you have a cyborg small intestinal bacteria overgrowth i mean you can be on fasting but just remember, be careful um, if you are underweight already, so just be careful with the fasting. The best way to, um, to contract this situation, specific SIBO, is not eating between meals. Aloe vera, it can help. Uh, uh, Ginseng, it can help. Um, Echinacea, golden seal, it can help, but not in long term, um, long, not in long term uh, periods, okay? Uh, how soon after you eat a meal, can you drink water? I mean, you shouldn't be drinking water like um, 30 minutes before your meals and one hour after your meals, okay? If you want to fast for a meal, which is the best meal to miss? Dinner, dinner. You never have to skip breakfast. If you want to skip one meal, it has to be dinner, it has to be supper, okay? But never breakfast. If you can, it can be lunch, but you are going to be eating until the next day, okay? 
uh, best meal to skip is just uh, breakfast. Um, okay, how soon after you eat a uh, meal can you drink water? Well, I respond that uh, question already. Should you break the fast with soup? Yeah, you can break the fast uh, with soup, uh, of course, yeah. Um, why is it that when we fast for two or more days only with fruits or water, why do you experience headache or light headacheness? Well, I mean, one of them, it could be the levels of the blood sugar, they can be lower than the normal range. Well, not than the normal range, but normal than lower than the normal or average that you have been uh, having uh, your blood sugar the blood pressure it can drop and also um, um, many many uh, uh, chemicals in that your body is producing during the fasting is going to be affecting also your uh, your bloodstream and also your bloodstream is going to be affecting your brain producing headaches um, it's very important this uh, friends if you never fast before if you want to start fasting, please do it with fruit, okay? The first day you can eat only like uh, apples or you can eat only pears only for one or two days, okay? But please, it's very important to drink water during the fasting, okay? If you never fasted before, you can drink some vegetable, vegetable juice, for example, kale juice, you can use broccoli juice, vegetable, green juices, don't use fruit juices, okay? If you, ne if you never fast before, okay, please, in this situation, you are going to start to adjust yourself or adjust your body in order to go to the next level, go to the next step that's going to be fasting only with what? But yeah, you can start with uh, eating just fruits, like uh, apples, like a uh, pears, or having just green juices, okay? How should we use the aloe vera? Well, we like to recommend from this kind of form of SIBO, um, aloe vera, one or two, three ounces of aloe vera, one, uh, uh, with, one, um, with one teaspoon of slippery elm, and then you can drink it um, before or 20 minutes before your meals. How long do we need to fast for the body to start breaking down fat to provide energy? 12 hours, okay? After 12 hours, your body is going to be using or producing energy from fat, okay? In the first 12 hours, you are not going to be using um, fats, okay? Um, uh, there is something very important here. That's why it's very important to do exercise in the morning before you breakfast. Because if you are doing exercise in the morning, you are going to be using energy, not from glycogen, but just from fats, okay? What should you do if blood sugar level drops? Please drink or have um, to your hand, have like an orange juice or have apple juice with you, okay? Some signs or symptoms of low uh, levels of blood sugar that you need to be concerned shaking okay shaking tremor shaking uh, 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 dizziness dizziness or severe dizziness or disorientation okay mumbling that you are able to speak properly um, um, disorientation uh, you are sweating cold or you are very cold, okay? You need to be careful with those symptoms or those signs, okay? Um, but yes, you, please, you need to have a, some kind of a fruit juice or some kind of juice with you. Uh, why only use vegetable uh, juices when fasting? Well, because I mentioned before, we don't need, or we don't want to elevate the levels of uh, blood sugar or the levels of sugar if you are drinking only uh, fruit juices, right? And how often you, how often should you drink the juice and how much juice should you drink it each time? It's, this is going to be almost like a four hours. Every hour you can drink like a one glass of green juice or even you can, you can do it like a every five hours. It's just to maintain, it's just to, uh, I wanna use this word, it's just going to deceive deceive your stomach, right? That you are eating something, okay? So, uh, but it, it, it can be like a four to five hours, okay? Um, one 
cup, I mean eight ounces of juices. At what age can children uh, do two meals a day? They can do two meals a day uh, if they are in normal weight, okay? If they are in normal weight, oh, oh, sorry, if they are, sorry, if they are obese or if they are overweight, they can't do fasting or two meals a day. If they are not uh, overweight, I shouldn't be um, uh, promoting or advising or recommending fasting for children, okay? Um, uh, why not? Um, well, because um, they, they, uh, they need those calories and they are uh, growing up. However, the third meal, it has to be very simple, okay? Have to be very simple. Fruits and bread, they are the, the best meal for, um, for, uh, for supper. And also it has to be early, okay? Around 5 or 6 p.m. or at least 6 p.m. That's why the, the, the breakfast has to be early, the lunch has to be early, and the, the supper have to be early in order to have at least like a four hours before bed and having your supper. Can we drink lemon water during fasting? Yes, you can drink lemon water during fasting without, uh, without use any sugar or without use any sweets. Okay, friends, it has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure uh, to be with you. I'm gonna answer only this last question because we have another, uh, another uh, lecture. Um, if I am underweight, can have only two meals per day and should I be fasting for a week or less? Honestly, I don't advise, um, I don't recommend fasting for people when they are underweight, okay? Um, um, why? Because, um, because uh, it's related to the amount of fat, okay? Should I be fasting for a week or less? You can probably, you can continue or you can continue with having only two meals a day. But uh, friends, these two meals a day, they have to be complete. Um, proteins, carbohydrates and fats in the morning, in your breakfast, a good amount for your breakfast and a good amount of your lunch, okay? Underweight and overweight, they are not, they are two different situations, but they can have problems in the long term, okay? So just be careful with this. Okay, one last question. Mm. Um, so you can continue with two meals per day, but I shouldn't advise you, recommend you to do one, one day a week of fasting, okay? Uh, only certain people are allowed to have three meals. Can you say what the criteria for these three meals? Well, underweight, pregnancy, children, uh, children when they are uh, underweight, okay, or normal weight, um, severe anemia, of course, um, and in some situations, well, type 1 diabetics that they need um, to, when they are under the use of, um, of, um, of insulin, okay? Uh, okay, there are some of the criteria that I do recommend, okay? Um, uh, for uh, having the third meal. Yeah, thank you, Sister Michelle. That type of work is very important if you work it's required to, 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 to have a high amounts of calories. It's very important. You need to have a third meal. But if you work, if you are working in the office, if you work, it doesn't require the expenditure of the, the expenditure of the burning a, a high amounts of calories. You don't need the third meal. However, if you work, it's a manual. If your work is working outside in the field, if your work is working as a, in construction, if you are using a very, um, uh, um, if you are using high levels of calorie during the day, you need to have the third meal, okay? Uh, remember, Energy White mentioned, this is not for everyone. Fasting is not for everyone. She said there are some who will be benefited for fasting one day or two. It's not for everyone and also this, Two meals a day of time restricted eating is not for everyone. Energy White mentions the same. Okay. So, okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your, um, 
for your feedbacks. Thank you for your questions. And also um, this afternoon, we are going to be um, uh, uh, discussing more about uh, probably benefits of fasting, the benefits of how we can be benefits, benefits from uh, 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 in order to um, um, reverse diabetes. Okay, uh, friends, let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we are so thankful with you for this uh, morning that you are giving us. Thank you for your, because you have been teaching us 